Guys, have you heard of the bureaucracy in Germany? It's langsam. YouTube channel. My name is Eva Sam Eta, aka Sam Sticks, aka the Hot Chocolates. <laughs> okay, if this is your first time of dropping by my channel, do well to subscribe, it shouldn't be your last. Turn on that post notification bell to get more updates on when I post new videos. And for all returning subscribers, you mean a lot to me. You guys are the real G. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. So in my last video, I got lots of engagement, you know, and some persons who commented talked about the audio not being, you know, clear enough or rather audible. I don't know. I just want to say thank you to you guys because that's what makes this channel grow. I mean, I would have continued shooting without knowing that my audio wasn't audible enough. But you guys, you know, talked about it in the comment and I feel it should be better now. Thank you guys, I really do appreciate. On today's video, we'll be talking about settling in Germany. You know, settling in Germany. I guess you guys watched my previous video and that was um, what you should do before, you know, coming to Germany. Now you're in Germany. Willkommen in Deutschland. Now there are certain things you need to do, you know, on arrival in Germany. Without much further ado, let's get right into this video. First of all, I just want to put a disclaimer out there that whatever I'm giving out right now is a first-hand experience of myself. So you are likely to face your own experience. It's just, this is just me giving you a rundown of, of what you should expect. Guys, pardon me because I'll be, you know, looking into my notes so I don't miss out on anything so that I can give every detail you're supposed to get so now you're in Germany. don't be so quick to start chilling or feeling relaxed as you all know by now you should know that germany is a police state you know rules and lots of rules and unending rules bureaucracies are really long so you want to you know do all you're supposed to do so you don't fall on the right on the wrong side rather of the law so number one thing you want to do um let's say you got accommodation in your home country you know you got you know the email saying okay you've been issued, you've been given a room or so or rather you came here you sought for accommodation the first thing you want to do is move in you know you move into your accommodation first of all you are going to you know sign you know a tenant contract with your landlord your landlady or house manager depending on whatever accommodation you get. In my own case, I got um, an accommodation with Student and VEC, Darmstadt. So from my home country, I sent an email to them and I told them that I needed an accommodation. Unfortunately, I got the feedback telling me, um, okay, I should make payment within so so time. You know, there's an um, accommodation in one of the dorms you know, in Darmstadt, of which I made payment. And when I came here, my contract was from the 1st of June, you know, which I signed the contract. And a document was given to me. It's called Vonungsgebirgsteinigung. I'm going to put it on the screen so you could get the actual spelling. This document is very, 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 very important. You don't want to lose it, okay? Because I doubt if you're going to get any other one. Is important in the sense that you are going to need it for your registration at the city office. So you want to hold on to it, you know, safeguard it, don't lose it for any reason. Number two, you want to register your presence at your school's international student services. So what this means is that you are going to go to school, you know, go to where the international student service is located, 
collect if you've enrolled before you came to Germany, you go there, you know, you get your semester ticket from them, your semester ticket, you use it for your transportation around the city, around the state where your school is located. Um, number two, you want to um, collect your Athena Carta. In my school, it's known as Athena Carta. I don't know if it applies to other schools, but it's a card, you know, you use it for um, payments at the Mensa, that is the student cafeteria. You also can use it to, you know, borrow books from the school library. Um, you can also use it to pay for your laundry at your dorm or accommodation if possible. Like I also use mine to pay for my laundry at my accommodation. I'm going to, I'm going to upload a video about how to um, use this card in doing your laundry in your accommodation. So also you want to, you know, download your enrollment documents from your school's portal. By now you should already have access to your portal, your individual portal, you know, that has your registration number, matriculation number, everything about you. So there, once you enroll, you could download your enrollment document because your enrollment document is also needed at the city office, your immigration office, when you're either extending your visa or you're actually doing your city registration. So you want to do that. Mind you, for the Athena Carta, you have to load money in it. So they're they are like ATM boots. It's like an ATM boot where you use your debit card, you know, to put in money in. You're putting money in the Athena Carta in which you could use in doing all these transactions. You know, it's not like it's preloaded. You have to load it by yourself using your own card. So that is that about the Athena Carta and about registering your presence in your school. So number three is getting the SIM card. You need a German SIM card because you can't use your local card. Yeah, I know you could use your local number here via uh whatsapp and all that but you need a german number for to be able to you know call um, within eu and in and in germany you know so you have to get a german number uh, you have lots and lots of networks you know in germany for me i use um o2 it's one of if not the best in germany with good networks and data plans um so on the day I went to uh, the city center, I think at Leusenplatz, I went to one of their offices and I got a package from them. Guys, note, for no reason should you take any contract. What you should do is a prepared, prepared plan. English. A prepared plan. Take a prepared plan, you know, and I'm just going to show you all I got from... O2 when I signed up with them. So I got this pack from O2. Inside it, they had this document, you know, your phone number will be there, the price for the gigabyte, you know, and everything, all the package, you know, that shows that, okay, you've registered with them. Everything in Germany is contract, contract, contract. What I mean by contract is like there are things you have to you have to sign, you know, you have to sign, you have to sign. But this is different from like a contract you sign with them. So what this means is that you're going to sign like a long-term contract, say okay, uh, one year or two years with them. What if as time goes on, the network longer works and you are tied to that contract till it finishes? So it's better you take a prepared plan. So you just do a plan of one month. Once it expires, you renew. You know, you renew. Nobody's going to tell you, okay, you can't renew. You can renew. Once you've done everything, every month, you run out of data. You can always pay for another data, depending on the plan you're on. So that is what I got from O2. And the staff were actually friendly. And I say they were really friendly. You know, this is it. This is also part of it everything you know this is the same pack 
you get you get a nano and also a micro sim as well so that is that about the sim the sim card so number four you are to take appointment at the city office that's the immigration office you have to take an appointment to do your email dunk. so what this means is your city registration is very very important without doing this or without having the document from the city registration you can't do anything in germany like this is tied to a lot of things you can't do it and you have a limited time to do it once you enter germany and if you don't do it there are certain sanctions you could even be deported is that serious so you have a limited time according to the city office in your city to do your city registration and the document you need to do this is your passport and your house document the document i mentioned earlier on your house document so you what you need to do is take an appointment by either calling the rat house or sending an email or going there physically you know to get an appointment like in my case because of the situation we face down here of having to wait for endless time for appointment and you know it is fixed so what i did was i went on the site of the immigration office i read through and i was able to see that in this particular city office in Darmstadt, every Wednesday is like an open appointment. So whether you have an appointment or not, you could come in and there's a certain number or that is given out. So once there's just that number, they don't attend to anybody. So what I did was I left my house very early, I think about five, five, yeah, five o'clock in the morning. I went there. You know, I even met numbers of persons there. There were already people there, you know, queue, queuing of English. You know, I met people there, actually, you know, and I joined the queue. I think we waited for almost two hours because the office opens by seven. So we waited till around past seven, the office was open. We went upstairs, you know, and I was asked what I'm there for. And I said, I'm Meldon. So I was given a number, 117. So I waited till it got to my turn. You see the numbers displayed on the screen. Once the number shows, it tells you the counter to go to. So it was my turn. I went there and I was asked, is this my first time in Germany? He said, yes. And I was asked for my passport and then my house document. It didn't take up to... Uh, five minutes or 15 minutes my details were entered my passport was scanned the document was scanned as well you know and i was asked to check on the other monitor to see if my details are correct of which i i told them yes my details are correct and everything was done swiftly and i was given my document and the staff was so kind you know she asked me do i understand german i said um my German is not really good. I'm still trying to brush it here and there. I just told her, yeah, she was like, okay, it's fine. We could do it in English. And she was kind, you know, all through the sessions, you know, and in less than five, 10 minutes, I was done. I got the document. This is what it looks like. This document that you see looking so simple is very important because without this document, I'm still going to talk about opening a bank account. You can't open a bank account. You can't do anything. You can't process your tax ID. You can't process social security number. You can't even work or do anything without so this Just document. in case you're wondering, what is the name of this document? The name of this document is called Meldi Bestai Tigong mail the bestage the gong so i'm going to leave the link i'm going sorry the spelling so you could actually get it in case you see it as a requirement in whatever you are processing this is what they are talking about mail the bestage the gong so finally guys that's the documents i got it you know it didn't take up to like five ten minutes with the immigration officer 
you know guys this document is really important you don't want to lose it for anything those in germany should already know why i'm emphasizing on dates five you open a bank account <clears throat> so here here is the case we opening a bank account in germany you need your passport you need your melody bestechtigung you need your house document you know to open a bank account so it is advisable to open a, fisc a bank account that has a fiscal branch you know like the tra traditional banking mind you you could also open an online account an online account doesn't require you having uh, having to submit your email down that is your city registration document you don't need to do this all you need to do is your upload your passport and then the visa and in like less than 10 30 minutes your account will be set but this could be used as as your second account you could see online banks such as vivid n26 um what's it called uh, revolut which is the one i use i use it as my second account but opening a fiscal um a bank with a branch in your city uh, is recommended as your first account so that you could use that as also your salary account or receiving your money it could be your blocked account it could be your salary if you are working so like the document i've mentioned those are what you need to open the bank account so you are going to get a link where you go on the bank's website you fill in your your details your name your address your phone number and everything and a number will be um will be generated for you and the forms some forms will be sent to your email address you are going to print out those forms and take to the bank of which you want to open like the fiscal bank so they have like sparkasa they have like commerce bank they have like deutsche bank you know etc etc i use commerce bank you know so you take it to them they'll process it and open the account you receive a message and email saying okay your current account which is called is, is known as zero conto has been opened and is ready for use you know you also get um, a credit card and also a debit card so your credit card and your debit card so but you're not getting this immediately mind you this is why i say the process in germany is really long like you need to wait they still believe in like receiving mails in post you know you know in some other countries you could get everything asap that same day you're processing but here you have to wait you've gone to the bank you've done the processes it's going to take like days upon days upon days you know to get i have letters upon letters from the bank you know every day i receive one thing or the other since i opened the bank so like you'll be told okay your account has been opened you can go you will get the iban in the document sent to you so the first letter will be your i think your pin uh your pin yes and then another letter will be sent you know as your in, for my bank they have like an app uh, where you could confirm all your transactions this is different from the the banking app itself so whatever transaction you are doing on the banking app you need to confirm it on this other app you know which for me i think is good for security reasons and then they'll also send you your credit card different with its pin they'll also send you your debit card different as well with its pin they're also going to send you your login details in a different email and also send you the pin in a different in, in a different mail sorry not email so when you receive this you are now going to you know go on the app and then do everything you could change your pin as well if you want to change your pin and then your account will be fully active so once you do this you just have to be patient don't force it all you need to do is after like five days or ten days of opening the account check your mailbox you might have gotten one or two or three letters from your bank and then you give it some time and then you also get some other documents from your bank till you get like as, I, as i'm speaking to you up until now i'm yet to get 
my uh, what's it called my debit card i've only gotten the credit card i'm here to get debit card in an email as well as the pin so i'm still patiently waiting because i'm already getting used to the system at first when i came i was always you know quarreling you know agitating now why is the process like this these are things that can be done and i mean this is jeremy a lot is being talked about jeremy but why is the process like this you might face different things in your city this is why i always leave a disclaimer that whatever i'm giving is for information purpose because in your city it might be different in my city it's different but usually generally speaking there's this bureaucracy thing about Germany. I mean, we came here, so that's just it. You have to live by it. People who have been here for some time are already used to the system. So yes, that is that about opening an account in Germany. So number six is your tax ID. So after the day you did your uh, mail down, your registration at the city office, you are going to give it about 10 days, yes, 10 days or more, depending on your city, it could be less, it could be more to receive it via post at your mailbox. So you have to wait patiently to receive it, you know. So, but the thing here is if after 10 days you don't receive it, then you have to go to the finance arm in your city. That is the tax office in your city. So for me, I waited about 10 days. And when I didn't see it, I went on a Friday to the finance office in my city, very close to where I stay, about five or 10 minutes. And when I got there, they were closed. And I'm like, what is happening? You know, I I felt they actually stay up until four on Fridays, but they closed earlier that day. So I came back home and I checked my mailbox. Thankfully, it was lying there, you know, so I didn't have to, you know, go back there on Monday. But the good thing is, at least I was able to know where the tax office is located so that in future, if I need any complaints or I want to resolve a complaint or I want to do anything that has to do with my tax, I can go there, you know, to do it. So that was not wasted. So, but in a case where you don't get it after 10 days and you go there, all you need to just do is tell them that, okay, you need your tax ID by hand, that you are very much aware that you receive it by post, but you need it by hand now because you need to process something and your tax ID has been requested. They'll be willing to give you by hand, but they will still send it by post to you. You just have to, you know, uh, what's the word again? Um, you just have to be polite in asking for it and they'll be willing to give it to you. So that is that about the tax ID. That brings us to number seven. Number seven is your health insurance. So in Germany, it is composite that you take a health insurance, either public, public, you have AOK, you have TK, you have DAC, you know, lots of them depending on your preference, you could choose. And you also have the private insurance like Mavista, uh, Care Concepts, etc. So uh, public is for those who are less than um, 30 and private is for those who are uh, above 30, you know. So what this means is that uh, you when you come here maybe you are yet to get an insurance you locate one tk is one of the best you could take tk you know though you go to their office you submit your bank details where they can be withdrawing the monthly deduction from every month through sepa sepa is like um like you giving an authorization of them debiting you every month so you submit your German address as well. You submit your insurance card. And I think you also submit your city registration as well to show your actual address. So when this is done, you get your health insurance card. 
you know, in <laughs> by via post again. So you have to wait a while for this to be processed. It could take two, three weeks, you know, to be processed, but you will definitely get it. So if you're above 30, you could register with any of the private insurance, you know, you just the same thing as I explained, you do it. But the dicey thing is when you get a job in Germany, some jobs require you to use public insurance. And let's say you're above 30, what do you do? There are some emails with the um, public insurance where you could actually send them so you could actually be using a private insurance with a public insurance so the private insurance ranges from uh, 30 to 50 euros depending on the packet and the public insurance ranges from 120 to 170 euros so note guys you could get the social security number processed at the social arm, I'm going to leave the the name on the screen so you could see it. You could go to the any social arms in your city in your city here yeah, and ask for a social security number and it to be processed and sent to you via post. So number eight on settling in Germany is extending your visa. So I don't know from your country you might be giving three months. In my case, I was given six months. You might be given six months as well. So once you come here, you are expected to extend your visa. When you extend your visa, you're going to get your resident permit card, which will also serve as your work permit. So this depends on your city. You might get it ASAP, like you might just book an appointment and get an appointment immediately and you do it you know and you get the card you go to the city registration office the Oslander beholder and collect it in person but it depends on the city again like i said in my own case till now i'm still waiting i went to the Oslander beholder and i was told that i have to wait three months to the expiration of my um visa i should come to the office and book an appointment and come for it to be extended. So in your case, you might be expected to do it immediately, but because I have six months, I'm expected to do three months to the expiration. And please make sure you have at least a year on your passport. If you don't have, then you need to renew your passport as well before going for that. And uh, the document required when you are going there, you know, you need to take your passport you need to take your blocked account document if you're using blocked account or your sponsorship letter if you're using sponsorship letter you need to go with your house document you need to go with your city registration document you need to go with your health insurance document you know you need to go with your tax id everything you've got in your document you need to take it there and then it will be processed you might be asked one or two questions and then on the later date, you get an email that it's ready for pickup, so you have to come to the office to pick it up. You know, so just so you know, for that of the blocked account, like I've asked questions, later research I've done, the blocked account, you get an extension of one year, you know, and then for the sponsorship, you get an extension of two years. So if this expires for the blocked account, you need to block another sum or you need to use your job contract if you have a job you need to use your job contract and maybe some money in your blocked account or rather the job contract and your statement of account showing that okay you could take care of yourself for another one year so also this also the sponsorship letter you have to do likewise either you take after the two years you go with the document which is valid for five years you get another two years um, but subsequently, you require your job contract. Like I said, it all depends on your city office and the rules that apply. They all have their different rules. They don't have same rules. They all have different rules. So you have to check their website to get the actual rules concerning extension of visa. So number nine, which is the last but not the least, is start applying for jobs see this is no particular order but 
you have to know that the most important thing in all of this is doing your city registration. So you could do this however you want to do it, you know. So you could even, like, as I'm talking to you, I got a job because my extension will be, like, uh, in, in, like, six months' time, you know. So I got a job, and my visa is used as my work permit, which permits me to also work in Germany. So you have to start applying for jobs, you know, so that you could cater for you. Yeah, you have your blocked account, you have your sponsorship, but, I mean, that bad, you, you need that, what's it called, that baby girl treatment. You need that baby boy treatment, you know. You also have your own money, you know. Money is never enough, you know. So you have to work so that you don't, be idle so you, some people prefer just to you know go to school don't get me wrong if you can school and work fine if you want to just school all through no problems it's your preference right there is no such of saying you must work if you don't want to work you don't work if you want to work you work just have a balance be able to balance both your schooling and your working don't do so many jobs and end up having bad grades because whenever you want to extend your visa at the immigration office, they'll always request a letter from your school. Though even if they don't request a letter, they'll do their own findings to know that you're actually doing well in school. Like your grades are okay for you to extend your visa. I don't want this. I don't want this video to be so lengthy. That's why I'm trying to cut it. You know, in bit, I might do a video on this particular topic because, like in my school, the you must pass at least one course per semester, and if you are unable to meet up with this requirement, you might be kicked out of the school, and you don't want to be exmatriculated from school because that is a whole different ball game on its own. So you want to keep up with your grades as you are working. Don't take too many jobs and end up you know, not um, getting your grades right in school. So guys, tell me what you think about the bureaucracies in Germany. I want to know your thoughts in the comment section. Let's make it interesting. Do you like it? Is it something you advise to continue? Or do you want the bureaucracies in Germany to be reduced to a barest minimum? Let's know your thoughts. So guys, I think I've been able to, you know, put this all out there for you. And if you've been able to watch till now, trust me, you're going to have a seamless um, um, process, you know, settling in Germany. After you've done this, you can now start giving yourself a treat. You can now start chilling. You've done the right thing. You are now on the right side of the law, right? So with this, this comes to the end of this video. Do well to subscribe, leave those beautiful comments, push the thumbs up button, turn off the post notification bell to get updates on videos I'll be posting. And until the next one, I love you guys. Bye.